Hello everyone, today we're going to start our chapter 4 which is about interest rates and asset pricing. We're going to begin our chapter with the concept of how interest rates affect us. So as a very brief example, let's look at two time periods, T and T plus 1. So T would be your current time period and T plus 1 is some future time period. If you were to be offered a dollar today versus a dollar in the future, which one would you prefer? A lot of you would answer a dollar today. The main reason over here is that the dollar today you can spend immediately. You can spend it and get some goods and services or you invest that dollar and earn interest on it. Whereas for the dollar promised to you in the future, you will have to wait a whole year in order to spend it or to save it for your further future time periods. So we can think of interest rates as our incentive to postpone spending. If I do not spend my money today, I can earn interest on it and then spend it in the future. So let's look at our concept of future value with this very simple example of a principal amount of $100 that I want to save for the future. And let's assume for now that we are just saving it for one year. Now P is typically what we call our principal and our future value would be denoted as F or FV. If I was to save this $100 today, at a simple interest of 10%, after one year, I will end up getting $110. Now, if I was to choose to save these for another year, so I can add another year to my timeline, what would be the value of my investment after two years? So I have in my first year $100, my principal amount. And as you can see, the term in green over here, this is my interest earned on my principal in the first year. And this total gave us our $110. But in my second year, I'm again earning interest on my principal, which is 10% on my $100. And I'm also earning interest on interest. So in this example, we are using compound interest. If it was just simple interest, we would have stopped here. I earn my $110 from the first year and then an earn another 10% on my principal. Whereas we are earning interest on my interest of $10. So this is an example of compound interest. We can simplify this calculation and write it as my initial amount of 110 and then I'm earning a 10% interest on this whole amount. The actual $100 principal plus the 10% $10 that I earned as simple interest in my first year and I end up getting $121 after two years. Now this expression can also be simplified into a simpler format as your principal amount which in our case was $100 and your 1 plus i which is your 10% over two years and it's giving you your future value after two years. If I was to look at my future value after three years, it would be again my principal, which is earning me interest in the first year of $10, then earning me another interest of $10 for the second year, and then another $10 for the third year, plus my interest on interest on interest for over those three years. So that compound interest on my interest payments from these three years. So we will have after three years future value would be my hundred dollars one plus ten percent and we always write this in decimal format raised to the power three and you can simply calculate this and get your future value you can now condense this into a generalized formula of your principal times one plus your interest rate raised to the power n where n is your number of years now future value therefore can be calculated for any type of principal amount that you are thinking of investing today. In order to see how your future value differs when you're earning simple interest versus compound interest, let's look at this very simple example. On this two-dimensional space, I have time on the x-axis and my dollar amounts on the y-axis. If I'm earning simple interest on my principal amount, so in our example, that was 10%, this is my $100 or my principal amount today. And after every year, I keep on earning $10 more. So it's a linear curve. Every year you earn $10 more. And you can see then after n number of years, n could be 5, 4, 20. But after n years, 
we can see how much simple interest we have total earned and what is the value of our investment. If on the other hand, I'm earning compound interest every year, I'm earning not just on my $10, but slightly more interest on interest. And over time, this could rise significantly. So this is when you're earning not just your simple interest every year. In our example, that was $10, but also your compound interest. And this compound interest seemed like a very small amount in our earlier example, but it could become significantly higher value if you're working over many, many number of years, especially for more than 10 years. So for example, in my last example, I was earning the $10 every year. And in my second year, I earned a dollar of interest as just my compound interest. So over here, if this was just simply simple interest over every year, my principal would have been 100 plus $10 earned in the first year and $10 earned in the second year. So in total, my simple interest earned is $20. Whereas compound interest has earned me a dollar more. And this $1, which was coming from this last bracket over here, is my compound interest earned. So over just two years, this compound interest is very, very small. It's a very small amount. However, you can think of an example where we are earning this 10% interest over 30 years or over 40 years or over many years, a longer time period, you'll see this, this compound interest will turn into a significantly larger amount. We can actually see the difference between the interest earned when you are just earning simple interest or versus compound interest with this example. So in our initial example, we had 10 percent interest let's increase n to 30 so over 30 years your principal was 100 dollars if you're earning simple interest this amount would become your principal plus the 10 dollars earned for each of those 30 years and your total value of investment becomes 400 dollars in 30 years whereas if i'm doing compound interest i have my principal of 100 dollars one plus my interest rate of 10 percent raised to the power 30 and you can use your calculator to calculate this and it will actually give you a much higher amount, $1,744, approximately 94 or 95 cents. So you can see your principal has significantly increased to a much larger value where your interest is being compounded annually. So the longer the time period, higher is the amount that you can potentially save when where interest is being compounded annually and not just earning simple interest. With our basic example of a principal of $100, we had our general formula for future value. We have now just reiterated it over here. Future value for any principal amount invested today is simply the principal amount times one plus i, which will be in decimal format, raised to the power n, where n is your number of years. When calculating your future value, you must remember to keep your n and i in the same time unit. So if your interest rate is annual, your n should also be in number of years. Or if you are compounding interest quarterly, then your time frame should be in quarters and likewise for monthly, etc. So in this example next, I have another $100 in principle invested over 18 months at an annual interest rate of 5%. How would you calculate this? If I substitute this in my formula, which was my principle of 100 times 1 plus 0 0.05. Now my interest rate is annual, whereas the time frame is in months. So I can convert the months into 1.5 years because 18 months is 1.5 years. And your answer would come approximately $107.59. Likewise, we can look at another example. And now we are investing a principal of $100 for just a month at 5% annual interest rate. And what will be your future value after just a month? So we have $100. So I keep my N in years. So one month out of a year would be just one over 12. And now you can calculate your future value. Now this formula over here is also giving us a general formula for converting any given annual interest rate into a monthly rate. So I can rewrite it as one plus an annual interest rate and be converted into a monthly rate by taking it to the power one over 12. And this will give you your monthly rate. Specifically, in order to get rid of the one, your monthly interest rate is one plus an annual interest rate raised to the power one over 12 minus one. Now in our example, we had $100. one plus 0 0.05 raised to the power one over 12. And that will give us our future value after 
one month. Your monthly interest rate in this example will come out to be 1.004074%. So that's a very, very small percentage. In terms of monthly rate, we can call it 0.41% or 41 basis points. What are basis points? Whenever we have one hundredth of a percent, that is counted as one basis points. So in a lot of financial calculations, we are sometimes working with very small interest rates, very low interest rates, and these are then referred to as basis points rather than 0.41%. So we have a monthly rate of 41 basis points at which we can calculate the future value of our $100. Present value is the value today of a payment that is promised to you in the future. So now you have a future value or future cash flow and you want to see what is the value of it today. So what is the present value of this future cash payment? Go back to your basic formula for future value. Future value was your principal or your present value times one plus i raised to the power n. This face value is locked in. We're not changing this. Your interest rate is also given. The number of time periods after which you are promised this payment is also known. So all these three are known and we want to solve for the current value. So rewriting this formula, we can solve for present value as future value divided by one plus i raised to the power. And this formula pretty much tells you that in order to find the value today of a payment promised to you in the future, we are discounting it today at some interest rate. Interest rate is now representing your opportunity cost of waiting. The higher is the opportunity cost of waiting for me, the higher is the interest rate at which I will discount this future cash flow. Lower the opportunity cost for me, if I'm not giving up that much, uh, I lower is the interest rate that I would discount this future cash flow at in order to ascertain its value today. So rewriting our formula for present value, it's some future cash flow, which we are discounting at some interest rate i over n number of time periods. If it's three years, we can substitute n over three. If it's 30, etc., we can always look at the number of time periods that we're working with over here and at some given benchmark interest rate over which we are discounting this future cash flow. This basic math formula also gives us some very interesting outcomes. It is telling us that higher the cash flow that is promised to you in the future, higher will be your present value. Secondly, we can see longer the time period. If the cash flow is offered to you 10 years from now versus five years from now, the present value of the payment promised 10 years from now will be lower. Why is that so? One answer is by simply looking at the mathematical formula. Another one is you're intuitively understanding this concept. The longer you have to wait, lower will be your present value for that particular cash flow. The shorter the time period to maturity, higher will be your present value or your, the worth of that security or that cash flow for you today. Thirdly, we see the interest rate. Higher the opportunity cost of waiting, lower is the present value of this instrument or of this future cash flow promised to you. Lower the interest rate, so lower is the opportunity cost of waiting, higher is the present value for you today for this promised cash flow. Now these three basic things are going to play a very important role when we start doing asset pricing. So I will quickly recall these. Higher the cash flow, higher the present value. Shorter the time period to maturity, higher is the present value. And lastly, lower the interest rate, higher is the present value. Thank you for watching this video. I'll meet you guys again for our second video of this chapter in which we'll be doing some asset pricing.